uh, got a 510 hand, um, but then maybe a couple minutes after the hand to talk about an alternate line. Okay. Right. Um, been at the table. This is the uh, the main, so I've been at the table for a bunch of hours. Mm-hmm. Um, the two people in the hand are both regs, uh, so we know each other's game fairly well, I guess. Yep. The villain is uh, good, tight, conservative, uh, good hand reader, mm-hmm. um, decent value, better. Mm-hmm. All right. The uh, first villain, who's a really, really good 5'10 player, opens early position uh, for 35. Okay. There's a, a caller between yep. him and the other villain. Okay. Then the uh, the main villain overcalls. I overcall with 3-3 three, three in late position. Okay. And we see the flop 4-Y. So you're in the cutoff or something? So, I'm in position. I'm I'm in the uh, either the button or the uh, cutoff. Yeah. So it's four ways times thirty-five. So you're looking at about one hundred and forty dollars, right? Right. Okay. And I have position the whole hand. Yep. Uh, flop comes out three of spades, mm-hmm. four of diamonds, five of diamonds. Three of spades, four of diamonds, five of diamonds. Okay. Yep. So I got bottom. I got bottom stat. Yep. Uh, the opener checks. Okay. Second guy checks. Villain bets a hundred. So V one checks. Check. V two to a hundred. Yep. Uh, my call. Okay. Everybody else folds. So Dave, you actually sent me an email about this before. The I didn't. I mean, I I really glanced over it pretty briefly. Um, by the way, if anybody is going to call in, you know, we do these shows on Mondays, and they want to send some sort of supporting information about a hand and this is no offense to you dave but send it before like the morning before the call-in show because i've got like a million things so i can't you know i I couldn't look at it but the issue here is is that what is the most i guess optimal line here right with bottom set i mean you're dealing with a field better you've got bottom set now did everybody fold behind is that what happened v2 bet 100 you called and everyone folded behind okay yes so it's interesting because you know if the preflop razor were to bet or if the preflop razor were to check uh, a lot of people will check call or if he were to say continue on a lot of people will check call here with say like two over cards and a straight draw when you had which is basically a gut shot, like if someone's got ace, king, ace, queen. So, you know, let's say the preflop razor had bet at you on this board heads up, even though this is not that scenario. Um, The question is, well, you know, do you raise to your call? I actually like a raise a lot against a preflop razor because of the fact that people will take off um, quite a bit with two over cards in a straight draw. Uh, I also like a bet if they were to check to you. Um against advanced opponents you know sometimes you can slow play because the guy might continue to barrel off here against this guy i i think it could probably go either way i mean you decide to slow play here what were your reasons reasonings for slow playing here against this this field field better yeah i believe he views me as um, very tight Uh uh-huh um if i show any real aggression i would fold out a lot of his single pair hands yeah that don't have a pair on a draw Mm-hmm. And I thought he was kind of heavy in, let's say, sevens to tens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, his his naked flush draws, I'm assuming he'll fold to a lot of aggression. His combination draws might be able to get it all in on. What are the effective stacks, actually? I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't put that in there. It's okay. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen hundred? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, though. I just Don't you think that a guy is pretty strong when he bets into four people after it gets checked to him? Like, what do you think you're going to fold out by raising on this board? Well, that's that's the whole reason for this is mm-hmm. yeah, I took a very passive line, mm-hmm. and then I tried to go through, um, you know, if I took a more uh, value-oriented line, yeah. yeah, what would that net? Yeah. I mean, my initial – there are several uh, – there are a couple, obviously – I mean, even for st- – sometimes, you know, playing a little bit of stack preservation also are kind of a, a – a, you can actually play a hand that's that's very strong, right, but not nut, a little bit slow um, for a combination of not not wanting to put yourself in a way ahead, way behind scenario, not want to folding out, you know, everything weaker than your hand and only having better to continue on. You know, the thing is, is that when you – with pocket threes here, 
you know, there's really only one combo of two pair this guy can have that you're ahead of, right? Like four or five. He probably right. has all the six sevens and he probably has all the ace deuces and you're behind to a set of fours and a set of fives. So that's right. six hands and then that's another eight hands. You're actually behind to 14 hands here. Now, yeah, you're ahead to pairs. You're ahead to nut flush draws and things like that. But everyone's kind of blowing up in the chat saying, oh, my God, I would raise this 100 percent of the time. Um I look at it like with a hand like bottom set here, it's not even really a slow play. It's more of a a combination of I kind of want to see what this guy does and I don't want to, say, get everything to fold out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the, the range that I put him on after the, you know, between the flop and the turn action was sixes to tens, which is 30 combos. You know, five, six suited, four, five suited, six, seven suited, ace, deuce suited, yeah. four, five, uh, fours and fives. Yeah. So to your point, uh, I lose to about 28% of his range and I'm ahead of about 72% of his range. Do you did you put all combinations of like nut flush draws and things like that in his in his range um, too? I, he has it on the flop um, after the turn action. Okay. I don't, all right. He, let's go to the turn. Turn again. Well, let's get to that. Yeah. We'll, okay. So so I call. Okay. Uh, yep. Turn is a jack of spades. Okay. Which now the board is double suited. Right. And um, he bets two hundred. So he now bets two hundred. Okay. All right, and I call again. Again, and I'm looking like I'm on a draw. And I think that that's not a bad. I mean, on you know, I think that the flop play is debatable. Um, once he continues to bet the turn, though, I, I I would probably not raise the turn because now I think that you actually look very strong if you raise the turn, and you actually might be overrepping your hand. You know what I mean? Especially if he continues. This is a good spot where, like, if all the draws break out and he checks the river, yeah, well, obviously I'm going to value bet, but. I think that we can agree that playing bottom set a little bit slow on the flop due to range versus range and then raising the turn, I think, you know, very well could be an overplay. Now, the flip side to that, I'm looking at the other side of that is, is that you still might get continue to, you know, get value if you were to raise with his nut flush draws, you know, something like that. But anyways, you call again. Uh, okay. And then the uh, river is a nine of spades, so it brings in the back door. Okay. He checks. Yep. Um, I give it to 30 second hesitation. I bet 500. And he tanks for the longest time and then you know, calls. So. Somewhat. Away. So. Um, just kind of putting this up here. So what, what was that action again? I'm sorry. Uh, check. Yep. I bet five. Yep. And villain calls after some hesitation and body language somewhat reluctantly so you bet 500 into 740 here and yeah. after the backdoor Ooh. spade came in that might be a little bit so you're just trying to make it look like you busted out on diamonds or what are you trying to get value from with that sizing i guess is my exactly. question looking like i busted out on on front door mm -hmm. or or one of the straight draws yeah the only and thing is is that with that backdoor spade coming in he actually might check stronger hands than you would think you see what I'm saying? Like, a guy actually might check a set of fours or a set of fives or ace-deuce or six-seven. Now, all of a sudden, he's scared. And when you continue to call the flop and on the turn, you might get a little bit scared. I mean, this is actually kind of a, an interesting spot where you wonder if the larger you bet, the smaller the times that when you are called, you're good. Like, I wonder if this bet gets called more than 50% of the time and you're good here um, versus, say, like a smaller bet. You know what I mean? If you were to bet 200 or yeah. 250 where he all, he's always going to look you up with eights, you know what I mean, or eights or, or sevens or something like that, or ace-jack of diamonds. Um, because I think that we can all agree, if he were to have a hand, say, like ace-jack of diamonds or ace-nine of diamonds, and he took this line, how could you ever check call the river, especially when you block the diamonds? I'm talking about from his perspective. So right. I think that your bet size here actually might be a little bit large in the sense that um, you're just not going to get called by the hands that I think that you want with this with this run out. Okay, I just got lucky on this particular situation. So well, he, yeah, after, after the hand though, I gave it a lot of thought and I, I went through some calculations on to take a more aggressive line, like stay in school is probably recommending, <laughs> and the others in the chat box. Yeah, and so if you look at um, 
you know, take 50% of his range, that'll call a flop, raise, turn bet, and river bet, mm -hmm. which is a lot, take yeah. 50%. And then 25% will fold after the turn, and 25% and will fold after the flop race. Mm -hmm. um, you take scenario one where he calls every street, and I raise 3x, and then um, that makes the pot on the turn 740. I would bet 500, bringing the pot to 1740. Then I bet 900 on the river. He calls all that. My profit there is 1700 and it's 50% of the time, so it's 850. Mm -hmm. Taking the next scenario, where it's 25% of the time where he folds, um, that nets me $75 if you calculate that out. And the third one where he folds on the flop action gives me $25 net, which is 950 which is higher than my profit the way I played it. But then if you take out the 28% loss, um, which is you know, 476 on the good scenario, that brings my net profit down to 374, where the way I played it was 576. I don't know if you followed the way I did that or not. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but what, what was your conclusion? Is that the passive line was more profitable. That the passive line he, was more profitable. Did, so did he end up calling or what? I, I, maybe he did I, end up calling, yes. Okay, and then you never saw what he had? No, he, he mucked after I showed. Hmm. Um, and you know, going through the calculations, I, I used Excel, and I went through a yeah. bunch of... Uh, you know, models, mm -hmm. and, you know, it came up supporting what I did. They're not saying that I'm correct in this because you could kind of force it to lean whichever way you want, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know how to go through these type of calculations at the table. Well, I mean, it's really difficult to go through. I mean, I had just, like I said, I had briefly looked at your Excel spreadsheet. It's very, very difficult to do that. And then, like you said, you know, you're just plugging in numbers with your best estimates. I'm assuming that you're saying that you that you have basically – you know, selected a range of hands that he would fold if you had played it aggressively, aggressively, right? Like if we were to like build some sort of card runners EV type of thing here with this hand, you know, we would have to say, well, if we raise, he's going to fold with this range. He's going to continue on with this range. If we call, he's going to continue betting this range, right? And then if we right. continue to call, he's going to, you know, he's going to check call with this range. I would really be interested to see what he had because I just don't know how often we are going to get called for that sizing on the river. And I think that this is more of, you might have played it for like a max value type of scenario, but it's a combination here, specifically with a bottom set and a straightening board where it's, it, it's kind of under representing your hand a little bit and a little bit of like deep stack kind of stack protection in this, right. in this scenario. So. I mean, I don't mind the way that you played it. I would just size down a little bit at the end. Well, I thought his range was either, you know, the small part of his range crushes me. Yeah. And the bigger part of his range isn't very strong. Mm-hmm. So if I show strength, yeah, he's going to call, of course, with the part that crushes me. Right, right. But he's really apt to fold the ones that he's, he's meddling hands. Which, of course, is the way ahead, way behind scenario, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, Absolutely. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.